Your impression about uh, this session of expert mechanism? Well, I think it's like um, past sessions. It's a very important uh, session on the um, um, agenda items that we had to discuss. But this year is particularly important because of the World Conference mm -hmm. that's coming up. And um, it was important that we hear from delegations from states and from indigenous peoples and others uh, their views on what should they be um, included in the World Conference. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was very important from that perspective. It was a different dynamic because of that, I think, but it was still important. Yes. Um, about uh, your uh, work uh, like a Commissioner of Truth and Reconciliation, do you think is it really uh, possible a reconciliation? You believe in this? Well, I have to believe that it's possible uh, because of the work that I do. Uh, and the harm that was done. Um, so in looking back at the um, past five years uh, for which I was engaged on the Truth Commission, I think there's some very good uh, acts of reconciliation beginning to happen. And because of that, there's some good healing that's starting in the community. So that is encouraging. That encourages me to keep working on, uh, on the difficult challenge of reconciliation. Because sometimes um, it's not clear what it means. So we need to begin, I think, from individual perspective and then from there uh, go outwards. Um, so it, it is a difficult challenge, but at the same time, I'm being encouraged already, as I say, from what I've seen happening in the communities. Mm -hmm. uh, in, do you think it's not the risk that the reconciliation means uh, uh, assimilation by the majority society and the historical religions? Actually, I think it's the reverse. Uh, when we ask people, what did you lose? What was lost in this experience? Many times they refer to culture and language and self-esteem and pride as indigenous people. So um, reconciliation is putting some of that back, you know, encouraging people to um, relearn their language that if they've lost it, also relearn the um, experiences uh, cultural ceremonies that we have, the sacred ceremonies that we have, because that brings back the pride in the individual. So I think it strengthens the individual aspect of um, the spiritual element, the ceremonial element, the sacred element, and also um, the self-identity. And if you have that strength, then assimilation is, is will not happen. So I think it's the reverse. I think it's encouraging us to go back to our own uh, um, ways and uh, uh, culture. Yes. In the majority society in this world, is, uh, the humanity is ill, the planet is ill, and perhaps uh, the only hope for the humanity is just in the indigenous people. You think so? Well, I know that we still have um, traditional leaders and elders who, who have traditional knowledge about how to take care of Mother Earth, uh, the connection to, to uh, the environment and to the land especially. Um, as a part of our work, we learned, for example, um, if you want to reconcile, go to the bush, go by the river, go by the river, and um, talk to the trees, talk to the river. But they say, more importantly, listen to what the trees are saying, listen to what the river is saying, listen to the, the wind and the air. And so we have this traditional knowledge holders that, are, that have the, the way to advise us or inform us on how to protect Mother Earth. So I think that accessing that knowledge now is critical. It's critically important because we're beginning to lose those knowledge holders. So there again, I think that um, the experience that we had with uh, uh, seeking the truth about what happened, how do we recover from that, and how do we reconcile together so that we have um, uh, mutual and respectful relationships going forward. So I think it's critical that we, we um, as I say, uh, utilize the traditional knowledge that's there right now with uh, knowledge keepers. So yes, I think there's uh, not only an opportunity there, but a good optimism, but we need to act uh, right away. Yes. Indigenous people are very different, but uh, they have something in common. Uh, is uh, I think is a, a spiritually 
a, a view of spirituality in common. Is that? Yes, I think that's the common thread that holds us all together, the spiritual aspect of our way of life. And it doesn't matter uh, what language you speak, what tribe you belong to, which ceremonies that you do. The one common element throughout all of the indigenous peoples, and I would say even further than that, all of humankind is the spiritual aspect, the spiritual element. But there again, we need to go back to the spiritual elements. We, we can't um, uh, leave them behind or we can't uh, exchange them in a way. So we have to rely back on the traditional knowledge keepers of our sacred ceremonies, for example. So the spirituality of indigenous peoples is, is uh, common, but also over the years, I've seen that contribution here at the United Nations. As I was saying um, at one of the sessions that I remember when I was asked to ask uh, the chairperson if we could say a, a prayer, an invocation, a thanksgiving. And I was told we don't do that at the United Nations. But now as we just saw a closing ceremony with a spiritual element, uh, it's been introduced here so that it helps us uh, keep it alive, but it also helps us share it with other cultures. Um, that we do have this common. Uh, it's interesting because in ceremonies, it doesn't matter the languages that are spoken, the spiritual connection is the same. 